Hey everyone, Nick from Practically Tactical. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I have Jeff here with me. <laughs> you cracked me up. <laughs> I don't know what I did there. No, because uh, you always say, I greatly appreciate it. So you kind of like roll that last appreciate it part. It's just something I caught on. Oh, well. I like it. I greatly appreciate you appreciating my appreciation. <laughs> Everyone appreciates it. Keep, let's keep going. Let's, let's, keep let's go in. with this. Yeah. Uh, uh, so what are we talking about in this video? Uh, we're going to bring you guys a review on the NAF Solutions Grip Work. So um, you'll see half of my gun here is I recently attended a Steve Fisher Sentinel Concepts class and broke some pins and some other stuff because, I don't know, I heard Glocks don't break on the internet, but it apparently happened. Uh, but, but the internet's always right. Yeah. So I actually had my Glock 19, uh, my carry gun, worked over by Nick over at NAF Solutions. And you actually had one of your 17s reworked by Nick over at NAF Solutions, right? He uh, he impressed me. It's kind of hard to impress me when it comes to most of the stuff because half the time, A, I don't really care, and B, it's like, great. You know what yeah. I mean? But this really impressed me uh, as far as stippling goes because you can kind of do your own stippling and most people just do a horrible job. And my whole thing was that when I first started doing stippling years ago on my guns, um, my, my whole framework that I was working about was it doesn't matter how it looks. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be functional. And I kind of did it almost to piss off people on the internet because <laughs> I did it as ugly as I could. There may have been bourbon involved. I'm just joking. But um, anyway, you know, uh, stippling has gotten nicer and nicer and nicer and uh, – a long way back, I had a friend of mine that's actually pretty decent at stippling do like a partial stipple job. So it was just where my support hand covered the side of the uh, the left side of the frame on, my, on the on that Glock. And then um, I don't know. The more I thought about it, and the more I shot like different stipple worked guns, worked over guns, the more I was like, there's no reason not to have full coverage on the gun. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my original thinking was the support hand is like you know, whatever, helping out more or something like that. So I sent him my Gen 2 Glock 17, my daily carry gun, my EDC, if you want to call it that, uh, which had already been stippled. Mm -hmm. And he redid it and did a phenomenal job, which really impressed me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one thing to take a blank canvas, but this was already like a partial painting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and did his lava rock pattern on it. And, um, I, I'm really impressed with this work. I, I gotta say, uh, not only the turnaround time was really good, but the price point. I don't want to quote prices because you know it varies stuff, by it varies and it fluctuates, and you know as time goes on and stuff. But I, it's a bargain. I don't know how he does it and gets them out so fast, and I don't know how he does them at that price point. So it, yeah. I'm really impressed. Yeah, the, it's usually right now. I think it's around about 120 bucks, minus, plus or minus different options. Um, so it's amazingly affordable. I think he turned mine around in like four days and five days for you or something like that. Yeah. Crazy quick. Um, what I really like about uh, his work that stands out to me is number one, yes, it looks fantastic. I mean, as much as we don't like to geek out and they're just tools, you know what? For me, it is nice to have my gun looking nice. It just, it, its design is uh, absolutely beautiful. I had him add a little magwell in case of you know malfunction of stripping and uh, very concentric, very smooth, no sharp edges on adding that in to the, uh, to the magwell. Uh, he has really nice borders that go around here. They're kind of like raised up going around. And then of course, since this is the Gen 3, on my Gen 3s I like to get the magazine release cut. Just to, I have smaller hands, so for me it helps kind of facilitate getting into that magazine release to, to get it out. Uh, trigger guard undercut in here. Uh, secondary undercut with stippling on here as well mm -hmm. just to get that more of kind of a grip uh, friction grip on your hand that goes under your sport hand and then probably my favorite feature is these have a couple of the frames gas pedals or ledges or whatever it might be uh, he has those on both sides of the frame and it's not just a cut in kind of hard ledge it actually has a little curvature to it that actually gives you a little more surface area when you're gripping the gun uh, I like the design, I like the cost, I like the functionality that it gives me in regards to grip and managing that recoil. For me, uh, man, it's it's a for the price included in that, it's a home run out of the park. Uh, and I, if anybody's out there interested in getting it, I would highly recommend sending their guns over to NAF Solutions. Yeah, and if you do it, uh, I would strongly urge you to get the undercut. Yes. Um, everybody that I have ever handed uh, especially, you know, Glock shooters, 
one of my undercut frames. So what the undercut is, is like right in front of the front strap where the trigger guard begins. It's a little bit um, thick on the factory mm -hmm. block. And if you undercut that, I mean, it sounds like maybe you're like, you know, fagging out a little bit, like really getting too technical. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, getting that thinner so you can get a little bit higher up on the gun really helps. And it's, it's just a lot more comfortable. Yep. You know what I mean? So I would highly recommend that and that secondary cut, uh, as well as a thumb ledge, honestly. I know I'm just like added all the options, but yeah. uh, my thing is this, you know, it's one thing to modify a gun, uh, but if it should all be function based, yes. you know what I mean? These should be things that allow you to shoot better, not just look good. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like Absolutely. a high-end 1911 where I want blue nitered pins because they're just pretty. This is something where uh, the more functional that I can make this gun, the more uh, robust I can, if it aids in my robust manipulation of the gun, that's a good thing. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, something I really noticed that like the Sentinel Concepts class, it was snowing and cold. Uh, when you kind of start to lose that, some of that dexterity in your hand, stippling really pays off yeah. in situations like that. Then, of course, if it's during the summer and it's sweaty and you got, you know, uh, sunblock on or whatever it might be, you're out uh, in a training class. All these things just facilitate you keeping a hold of that gun, managing that recoil and, you know, getting faster, you know, faster follow up shots or again, just keeping a good grip on the gun. Definitely. It's one of those things. It's like if you've never kind of picked up a stippled Glock. Once you do, your original oh. factory Glock feels like a soap bar. Yep. You know, so it's a very functional thing. Uh, you know, once, I'd say the first thing somebody needs to do if they're going to modify their Glock is get better sights because the factory sights are abysmal. Uh, then after that, probably get some good stipple work. Yeah, no, you absolutely. Uh, again, it, it exactly what you said. It adds functionality mm -hmm. while still looking good. So, uh, yeah, Nick did over, did a great job over there. So for you on yours, what, what would you recommend? So for somebody out there that has uh, a Glock that they want to send in, what would you tell them to get? Well, like I said, I mean, get obviously the stipple job. Um, I think, you know, again, these are all functional things. Like what Nick was saying, these half moon serrations, uh, he had to work kind of a re His are more true to what Nick does. Yeah. Uh, mine already had slight kind of um, material removed, so he had to go with that. But I like the idea that I can rip that mag and help jettison it out of the gun. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so, the, so that's going to allow me to grip the base plate of the magazine. Uh, the undercut, uh, again, allowing me to get a little bit higher up and minimizing the distance between these fingers as I'm shooting. The secondary relief cut for my support hand to get a little bit higher up on that gun. It also provides like a, it's like almost like a, uh, having a, you it's know, a, nice a stop point. A for stop me as well. on the gun. Yeah, a reference point. I'm getting the same consistent placement with my support hand index finger underneath that trigger guard with that. And then I really like that. I've been doing the thumb ledge for five years, you know, a long time, because my thought is that, and I, I think in practice, it also, it, it, you'll be able to see that with my thumb, I can either, you know, there's two kind of ways of thinking about it. I can either have my support hand thumb along for the ride, or I can use it to aid in keeping that muzzle level, yep. you know, but with a little downward pressure. So I think that they're, they're all functional things. And then the last thing uh, for me, I have big hands, so it's not hundred percent necessary, but dishing out that magazine release area, if you've got smaller hands will certainly aid if you're going to continue to use your dominant thumb to remove magazines. Yeah. Uh, and I especially like that on the gen threes, gen fours. Uh, yeah, I, it's pretty big. It's like a yeah, paddle. Yeah. Uh, gen threes. I, yeah, I highly recommend getting that magazine, uh, release cut around it just helps me get in i have less material stopping me from putting pressure on it yep. yeah uh but yeah if you guys are interested put a link down below to to nick's website go check him out i think uh, i'll be sending more guns to him mm -hmm. oh you want to shoot you go oh do you think they want to see you shoot it everybody likes shooting stuff right oh okay, yeah sure yeah. all right let's shoot it and you can guys you guys see these guns in action all right so let's see how controllable this thing is Pretty good. I mean, the gun really isn't moving. I'm just able to really track that front sight and that vertical plane. I like it. Uh, the other thing that, that you'll notice if you're allowing that, that, that support hand thumb to kind of come down in that thumb ledge is that you'll feel it a little bit more in your thumb. You'll actually, it, it translate into that sight rather than kind of lifting up and resettling in that, in that, uh, 
the notch in the rear, uh, it just kind of bounces. It's pretty cool. It's a neat effect. So there it is, guys. There's a review of the NAF Solutions stippling work. Uh, I should also mention, too, that they do more than just Glocks. Uh, so if you guys have different polymer framed firearms, uh, you can get a hold of him and uh, check out all of the services that he offers. But for me, the cost, performance, quality. Uh, if you have a, a Glock that's not stippled, I think you should send it over to him. Or at least go check him out. Definitely agree. Yeah. Uh, you guys have links down below. Check all those out. Uh, thanks to Great Lakes Ammo for giving us some ammo to test out these guns. Uh, if you guys want to save some money on some ammo, go down in the description box below. Get a discount code for ammo at greatlakesammo.com. Of course, when you thank our awesome hosts for letting us shoot all of their steel all the time. Alliance Police Training. Go check them out for some awesome training. Go check out NAF Solutions. That's all I got. So, Like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.